Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another uh, edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, if you are brand new, first time here, thank you very much for giving us an opportunity to fill your brain of nothing but nonsense and hopefully chime in with a little bit of unbiased technical analysis on the next day's potential. So thank you very much. Hit like, share, subscribe, all that stuff they tell you on social media to do. I recently learned how to say all that stuff. So thank you very much for bearing with me and my lack of ability to navigating social media. So let's talk about the market. Um, if you look at the final scoreboard, nothing really jumps off uh, jumps off the shift. You have um, you know a little bit of a little bit of decline uh, in the S and P, a little bit of a decline in uh, the Nasdaq 100, four tenths of a percent uh, for the Nasdaq 100 through the week. But the bigger story continues to be that we are just trapped in this, uh, I don't even want to use the word distribution channel, but we're just trapped in this channel. And, and the biggest problem I've had uh, through September is not the individual setups. The individual setups have been great. You know, Tesla's been strong, Am you know, Amazon's been strong, A Apple's been weak, NVIDIA's been weak. So the individual trades on both sides of the, of the market are actually really performing, like really performing very, very well. The problem is from the macro side, and this is kind of what I continue to talk about, is we just can't get out of this channel. We had several opportunities to get out of this channel this week, and we just couldn't do it. Even on Thursday, when we had a 2% day uh, in the NASDAQ, everything was going great. And guess what happened on Friday? We gave it all back. So it's a very, very weird tape as far as continuation. The day-to-day -day continues to be very, very solid. Okay, again, we always are prepared on both sides of the market, but at some point, it's going to get you know it's going to get a lot of the swing and position traders very very frustrated because realistically, if you are a swing trader uh, or an active swing trader and you're using the previous day's low as your max pain, well, you're getting stopped out a lot, right, from the swing trading aspect of it. So it's very very important the market kind of gets out of this range. Uh, this past week, we saw uh, the anticipated ARM IPO. Well, everybody else anticipated. I didn't know the damn symbol was even alive till Thursday, but ARM came out, actually a pretty decent move, uh, pretty decent move, gave a little bit back on Friday. Uh, it is an ADR, an American Depository uh, receipt. So eventually uh, you're not going to be able to trade this thing because if you look at the, all the ADRs uh, that trade, they're all choppy names. They're all very, very choppy names. And eventually when the luster dies down with this one, uh, it's not going to be, you'll, you'll see it in a few weeks or even a couple of months, this is going to be not tradable. It's just the, the initial hype, all that liquidity came in. Uh, but eventually, all ADRs become super, super impossible to trade. All they do is gap up or gap down and just sit there uh, primarily for the whole day. But this uh, obviously was uh, kind of a, a big deal uh, for the week. You had a lot of companies that had pieces of it, uh, like NVIDIA. But the one thing, NVIDIA, that we kept on talking about throughout the week was, if you guys remember, with the first time when it broke the 50-day moving average, it had a hard time reclaiming it. And Friday, we had a really nice pivot on Friday in this thing uh, below the five-day moving average and traded all the way back down and lost Monday's lows. Like, this is a name that, that does look lower. When you look at a lot of names, they do have really like terrible charts, like really, really uh, terrible-looking charts. Even the stocks that were strong, they just continuously give it back. Like Microsoft was strong, right? Microsoft was super strong. Gave it all back. Uh, Amazon, that I had a really good trade on Amazon this week. I bought this thing uh, through the breakout price, a gap of about two and change. And look what it did. It came filled in this whole gap and broke below uh, the gap down level. Uh, Apple continues to be, uh, Apple continues to be, uh, you know, just hit on every single rally. Uh, they had uh, some news of delays, I believe, in the iPhone uh, 15 on Friday. Uh, didn't really help out its cause. It's kind of sitting at the bottom of the channel here. And this is a name. We should definitely watch in the bottom of the channel this week. This thing, if this thing loses the bottom of the channel of August lows, this thing isn't is going to get hit. Uh, Nvidia is the same thing. Nvidia, this is the lowest close in this whole formation. Now, uh, a couple, of, if you guys remember, a week ago we had this great trade below the 50, stopped at the 100, at, at the 50 uh, EMA. Well, Friday it lost the 50 EMA, and now you know you're looking at another seven points or so uh, for measured potential to the lower Bollinger Band. If this lower Bollinger Band 
uh, starts to lose. Guys, look how much room you have. You have room all the way down uh, to the August 14 low. So there's a lot of potential on the video we, is to, to the downside this week. A name you know that I, I was swinging for uh, since Monday was Tesla. We bought that 66 opening range high. Uh, stock traded up as to highest as 278 this week. <clears throat> Friday, it got to 79. It got rejected at 79 twice. And I wound up kicking it, uh, kicking it out. I think all of us pretty much all kicked it out. Uh, up about eight points, uh, you know, to, to, to finish off the runner. The only reason why I kicked it out was because the index is closed uh, below the 50-day moving average. That was the only reason. If, if, the, if the Qs uh, didn't, you know, didn't lose that 72 area that we were talking about the whole week, I probably would have kept it. But it's okay. I, I look at it from a full, more of a, of a feasible point of view of, you know what? Look, it still has to attack the top of the range. Um, there's no reason to sit for it. Worst case scenario, we buy back to the top of the range and see if it confirms later in the week. And again, remember, there's no guarantees uh, it even uh, does so. Uh, the way the indexes start this week, uh, let's talk about it really quickly. Uh, you got the QQQs. The big support on the Qs, guys, write this down. The big Q, Q, uh, support on the Qs is going to be 369. Okay, 369 is the big level going to this week. This represents... Uh, the lows from September 7th, and that is also uh, the rising. Uh, that is also the rising 50-day uh, EMA. If any close below 369 in the queues, guys, it's going to be violent. Look how much room we have. You, have. you have about 10 points of downside in the queues. On the other side of the spectrum, look at the upside here. It continues to get rejected uh, off this area. It has to close. It has to close above 378. So as you can imagine, more stocks are opening Monday session closer to the bottom of the range to the top of the range and like I like I said in a couple of, a couple of videos ago it's not that I'm going into tomorrow's a Monday session negative I'm just looking at more setups to the bottom of the range because that's where the cues you know the cues went but again anything's possible uh, and if the market does rally obviously Tesla is has the best formation out of this whole group and if the market goes sour guess what happens right Nvidia has the best setup to the downside so we are ready on both sides. Uh, we're ready to go. Uh, look at the spies. Spies start this week right on uh, support. Guys, watch this level here. Any close on the spies below this 5, uh, 442 and a half, 442 level could be lower prices coming in this week. So it's very, very important that the bulls defend this 442 level on the spies, or we're going to have uh, lower prices going, potentially testing this bottom range. Uh, right over here. Uh, the big uh, kind of component for this week is going to be uh, the FOMC that is on on Wednesday. You know, we had a lot of data this week. We had the CPI, the PPI didn't really move the needle. Uh, you have Friday at the Michigan, uh, the Michigan sentiment index, more readings of inflation, sold the market. We rallied on the PPI. We sold off on the on the Michigan consumer, uh, Michigan sentiment index. And here we are, right? We, we're nowhere uh, we're nowhere, um, you know, better or worse off uh, than we did start the week, pretty much flat on all indexes. So, you know, we have to have an open mind, guys. But again, if you are charting this weekend, you know, you have to take the market from a face value, especially if you are uh, an intraday trader, day to day trader. Uh, watch, you know, you, you'll see a lot of setups to the downside. And let me give you guys several uh, before we continue with our weekend. Obviously, NVIDIA is going to be my top watch if the market continues lower. Again, you just have a lot of potential here to the downside. The video already gave back the 50-day EMA. So if it starts losing Friday's channels, there's a lot of room down. Uh, look at AMD, right? We talked about AMD at two areas of interest. We talked about the 105 that lost, went to 103, lost the 103, went down to 101. Now it's very, very close, guys. You know, look at the August lows. If if AMD starts losing the August lows, again, you can see it's all correlated uh, with the QQQs. This thing can get hit as well. A uh, couple of names I started uh, swing positions in on Friday. Uh, Peloton, this is the lowest close in the whole formation to the downside. Uh, obviously, if this thing starts you know, pretty much confirming how, uh, how all these earnings low plays play out uh, after they lose earnings lows, well, we, we can have a, a nice fade uh, this week, but I started a short position this thing on Friday. Uh, same thing with uh, Car Gurus. I, for some reason, I call it Car Gill. It's, it's Car Gurus, same thing. They blew up on earnings. This is the lowest uh, close in this whole formation. Keep an eye on this thing. 
for a potential move lower. Uh, AMBA is a name I gave you guys a couple of uh, weekends, a couple of weekends, a couple of days ago. Uh, another earnings low play. Again, this is the lowest close in the whole formation. Watch this a umbrella for potential downside moves. Uh, look at Square, right? Square is very, very close to losing uh, its earnings low as well. Uh, obviously, for any strength in the market, I'm going to continue to watch Tesla. I don't have a position in it now, uh, but if it starts confirming, especially Friday's pre-market high, I think this can wake up. And let me give you guys one speculative name. You guys, for all you guys who trade these crazy stocks, remember this, remember this stock, VFS, that had this really, really crazy one run. It went from like 11 to like 90, right? It's not that far of waking up. But guys, watch this thing above you know, watch this thing above this channel here. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to wake up this morning, uh, th this uh, uh, this week. But keep an eye on it. It's starting to go sideways. Uh, three out of the last five days is a green candle, which means uh, a higher close than open. Keep an eye on this thing. If it could just reclaim back the 50 EMA, you might get a push here back into the 50-day SMA. So keep an eye on this thing this week. Again, it's not something that I'm generally going, going to look at, but I just, I just found the chart. And I saw it, you know how, how big of a run it had. So you never know. If this thing starts taking, re especially reclaiming back to 50 EMA, uh, maybe this thing wakes up as well. So that's it, guys. We have uh, FOMC uh, coming up this week. We have a lot of names closing the bottom of the channels. We know what our, uh, what our pivots are to the downside of the queues. We know what our pivots are to the upside of the queues. Now we just have to be mature adults, wait for it to confirm, and see what happens next. Guys, God bless. If you are joining us on Monday, uh, please use this opportunity to watch uh, the PS60 workshops. They're actually free for everybody. If you've uh, ever been curious about pivots, guys, it's it's a free workshop. It's There's two separate videos, about eight hours worth of data uh, that's breaking down the theory. Again, if, if, nothing, if nothing else, you know, watch it, see if it's something that you're interested in, and, you know, maybe apply it to your own training. Guys, have a great weekend. God bless, and I'll see you all on Monday. Take care.